is on this like mission to say that Kurt wrote all your songs. No, he doesn't do that. He implies it, and, and which is just even lame enough. But the thing is, is that he's got yet another song about what a bitch I am. Mm -hmm. Courtney Love drops Live Through This, which is an incredible album and her best work. It has this massive Nirvana vibe, right? Then husband Kurt Cobain dies, and all of a sudden, her skills seem to vanish. So back in the early 90s, there was this urban legend that Kurt actually wrote music for her. And to make matters worse in 1996, a widely circulated bootleg came out, showing Cobain singing the whole song, asking for it. After that, more stories started spreading about tapes of Kurt, singing most of the whole record, Live Through This. To stir things up even more, Dave Grohl added his two cents. Now, if Kurt was refining Courtney's raw songs, you could say his role was more like an editor. But a lot of people believe it's more than that and see it as a true collaboration. This is why, after his death, her attempts to find replacements have been pretty messy. She got in a relationship with Billy Corgan from Smashing Pumpkins, and her songs started sounding more like his style. In fact, he helped her with songs on Celebrity Skin, but they publicly argued about how much credit he deserved. Now, the Smashing Pumpkins thing has accused Courtney of downplaying his contribution to the new whole album. He says she's turned the whole thing into an ugly incident because she's embarrassed that she needed someone to help her. Billy says we're not talking anymore. This is how Courtney explained Billy's work on the album when we caught up with her last. If you want to know about what Billy had a little bit of composition on, all you should do is look at the art. It's right there. One, two, three, four, five songs out of twelve. Billy came in and helped me mostly with vocals. But arranging and all that stuff, that was all Eric, Michael Beinhorn, and us. Corgan called his role Svengali, meaning he was the driving creative force and mastermind behind the album, while Love called him her music teacher. She summed it up by saying that her music has no structure, just chords she learned from Billy and Kurt, which she transforms from boring into something magical. So the fact that she couldn't finish Celebrity Skin without a lot of help just adds to the speculation that she needed Kurt's help in Live Through This. Let's take a closer look at songs rumored to have been made by Kurt Cobain. So, back in 1996, this bootleg popped up of Kurt singing the whole song, Asking For It. It all started in October 1993, when Kurt visited the Atlanta studio where Hole was recording. While he was there, Courtney dragged him into singing background vocals on a few tracks. According to the producers, Kurt seemed completely unfamiliar with the songs, including Asking For It. That day was the source of the tape that eventually leaked. Although his vocals were mixed very low on the final version of Live Through This, you can still hear him in some spots. Next we've got this song called Old Age which Kurt allegedly offered to Courtney, but she claims she wrote it. This track is an outtake from the Live Through This sessions. It showed up abroad in 1993 as the B-side to Beautiful Sun, with Courtney listed as the sole songwriter. However, in 1998, a boombox tape of Nirvana rehearsing Old Age from 1991 surfaced. It was a bit different but still clearly the same song. Chris Novoselic confirmed that Kurt wrote that song, which is pretty suspicious, right? Courtney had a bit of a magpie nature. There are stories of Kurt working on a riff at home, seeing Courtney get interested, and telling her, hands off that one. This trait also showed up in the way she dealt with Nirvana's last song recorded in the studio, You Know You're Right. She fought fiercely against its release, claiming she had exclusive ownership of the right of publication for all unpublished songs of Kurt. She even called it a 
potential hit of extraordinary artistic and commercial value, and asserted that a release with the song could sell 15 million copies. However, she couldn't resist playing an acoustic live version of the song called You've Got No Right instead of You Know You're Right on an MTV Unplugged special on Valentine's Day in 1995 with her band Hole. Alright, so let's analyze songs that were written way before Courtney and Kurt were even a thing. You know, Live Through This came out on April 12th, 1994, but their story goes way back. According to Michael Asarad's bio, Come As You Are, Courtney and Kurt first crossed paths at a Dharma Bums show in early 89. Nirvana was just the opener back then. From the get-go, Courtney had a thing for Kurt, but Kurt was actually seeing Mary Lou Lord and wasn't exactly picking up Courtney's calls. He was head over heels for Mary, and was even thinking of marrying her. It wasn't until around November 91 that Kurt officially split with Mary. That's when Courtney poured her heart out in doll parts. She said she wrote it in about 20 minutes because she felt Kurt wasn't into her. She wrote most of the lyrics on her arm in Sharpie because she ran out of paper. Meanwhile, people were pounding on the door as she penned those heartfelt lines. The song was played for the first time about an hour later at the Virgin Megastore in Boston. Courtney explained, It was about a boy whose band had just left town, who I'd been sleeping with, who I heard was sleeping with two other girls. It was my way of saying, You're an idiot if you don't choose me, and here is all the desire and fury and love that I feel for you. Another song that comes to mind is I Think That I Would Die, which she co-wrote with Kat Bjelland. And then Kristen Pfaff came up with the riff for Plump. So you can see she's definitely got it in her. She's great at coming up with sharp phrases, has good taste in music, and can create a catchy hook. But, for some reason, she struggles to pull a full song together. What she really needs is an editor to help her refine her ideas. It's kind of like how Stevie Nicks needed Lindsey Buckingham to shape her music. We often think that Courtney Love was the only one who got inspired by Kurt Cobain, but it's not really a one-way street. Nirvana's live sound engineer, Craig Montgomery, recently pointed out that Kurt actually learned about things like Penny Royal T and who Francis Farmer was from Courtney. Craig openly said, I'm Courtney Defender. Whatever people think about her, I think she's a brilliant writer. I think she's a talented songwriter. It isn't true, but a lot of people like to accuse Kurt of helping write her album, Live Through This. And my response to that is, if you're going to do that, then you also have to acknowledge her contribution to writing in utero. Her influence is all over that, and if you can't see that, you don't know anything about Kurt and Courtney. Alright, so here's the deal with this whole Courtney and Kurt song saga. Some folks backing Courtney claim that Kurt actually wanted to drop a version where they both sing together, you know, as a cool treat for fans. But then in this interview, Kurt did with Gavin Edwards, for his book, Music's Most Enduring Mysteries, Myths, and Rumors Revealed. He mentioned digging playing music with Courtney and finding it really fresh, but he figured they wouldn't release any collabs. He felt it was a bit too reminiscent of John and Yoko. He did admit they penned Penny Royal T together, although some say that song was written way before he even met Love. And about those rumors that Kurt wrote songs for Courtney? Well, turns out those started with people she had some beef with, like Dave Grohl trying to throw shade her way. Plus, saying he wrote all those songs kinda disses the talents of Kristen Pfaff, Eric Erlinson, and Patty Skemmel. Those guys had serious chops, and they put their hearts into it. Patty Skemmel, Hole's drummer, once said, 
That was always the thing looming, that Courtney's marriage and her life were bigger than our band. We always had that battle of having to prove ourselves as a legitimate band. All we had were those songs. And if you dig a little deeper into her early lyrics and music, from her previous bands like Sugar Baby Doll and Pagan Babies, you'll see those same themes pop up in Live Through This. Take the song Softer Softest, for example. It talks about being a pea girl and touches on the hippie lifestyle she was raised in by her mother and stepfathers. That whole song is about her mom, Linda Carroll, and the complex relationships with mothers and feelings of abandonment. She even revisited those themes again in 2010 on Nobody's Daughter. Some say that her later songs were definitely influenced by Nirvana, but not because Kurt wrote them. After the massive success of Nevermind, a lot of artists wanted to capture that perfect mix of being accessible, yet still edgy. Courtney Love herself admitted she was very competitive with Kurt Cobain because she wanted more melody. Whole guitarist Eric Erlinson also confirmed this by saying that Courtney felt the pressure of competing with Nevermind. Alright, so it's no wonder Hole ended up following a path similar to Nirvana. They had a lot in common. Similar outlooks, lives, came from the same scene, and had those shared cultural sympathies. Plus, they were both putting out music around the same time. You know, from Bleach to Nevermind, and Pretty on the Inside, to Live Through This. It's like they both started with this raw, gritty sound, and then moved towards something more commercial, more melody-driven. Maybe both bands just got more into songwriting for their second albums, but you can't help noticing that parallel. Of course, when it comes down to who actually wrote the songs, only Kurt and Courtney really know for sure. Kurt's no longer with us, and if there was any truth to that rumor, Courtney probably wouldn't spill the beans now. So, what's your take on it? Who do you think was the real genius behind those tunes? Let us know in the comments.